Welcome back to Lightning Lap 2008. We're on to the LL2 class, which is cars with a base price between $30,000 and $60,000. It's a crowded class this year with 15 cars. Let's get to it. The BMW 135i's strong brakes and outstanding grip easily harness the speed its twin-turbo inline-six so readily acquires. We noted excessive up and down motions in the suspension, but this is a trade-off for the car's excellent ride quality. At its limits, the 135i laps into understeer, but those limits were high and the car inspired total confidence. That other BMW, the M3, is a staff favorite and offers the perfect blend of track day performance and everyday drivability. It underperformed somewhat at VIR, due to a fussy automated manual gearbox which didn't want to downshift on command. But even so, it beat the 911 Turbo from last year. The M3 delivers the kind of dynamic interface we associate with pure performance sports cars. The Mugen treatment gives the Civic Si what Honda calls a track-ready suspension. It's lowered, damping is firmer, and the wheels are wider and lighter. The result is a button-down chassis that exhibits very little body roll. Even so, the Mugen could use some more horsepower, and keeping the engine in its narrow power band can feel suspiciously like work. The Subaru Impreza WRX STI was the only real disappointment in LL2. Subaru's quest for family-friendly appeal has diminished some of the previous STI's track performance. Its sophisticated all-wheel drive system, 305 horsepower turbocharged flat 4, and excellent brakes can overcome its overly supple, creamy ride. Sadly, the added comfort is no help on track day. The Lotus Elise SC seems to have the right formula for lightning lap. It's super lightweight with a supercharged mid-mounted inline 4 and a 6-speed manual gearbox. In reality, it failed to impress due to a vague shifter and narrower tires than the last Lotus we took to VAR. It finished over 6 seconds slower than the naturally aspirated Elise we tested in 2006. The biggest surprise in LL2 was the Cadillac CTS-V. Not only did it finish second in its class, it finished ahead of the mighty BMW M3. The CTS-V possesses remarkable thrust, a precise 6-speed manual transmission, and balance that allowed the driver to drift and pivot this big sedan with ease. Despite an almost 4,300-pound curb weight, the brakes offered formidable stopping power without a hint of fade, lap after lap. The Mercedes-Benz C63 was just off the pace of the M3, with its best lap less than a second off the BMWs. The Benz was able to exploit its brute force advantage in the straights, abetted by a 7-speed automatic engine, excellent brakes, and a stability control system that allowed for some drifting. On VIR's technical sections, the Mitsubishi Evo MR was as precise as a surgeon's scalpel. It provided absolute confidence in the uphill S's. What held the Evo back in its bracket is its power to weight ratio. 291 horsepower for a 3,700 pound vehicle. The Lexus ISF is a car that knows how to follow orders, and at VRR, these orders should be chosen carefully. With 416 horsepower on tap, this Lexus moves down the track in a great hurry, but at high speeds, its behavior erodes from eager to darty. Some refinement in springs and damping might help. Audi has improved the front to rear weight bias on the S5, but it still has too much weight on its front axle. The S5's V8 delivers impressive low end power, its 6 speed manual gearbox is exceptionally crisp, and its brakes are as good as any, but for all its style, this car is really not that happy on a racetrack. On the other hand, Honda's S2000 is very happy to find a racetrack. The initial CR stands for Club Racer, and with this name comes a suspension and aero package conceived to make this car quicker without adding horsepower, and it seems to work. This was one of the few cars at Lightning Lap that allowed us to take VIR's climbing S's flat out. Unfortunately, its brakes faded after a couple laps and never fully returned. VIR proved that the Dodge Challenger SRT8 is a lovely street rod, but the driver never ceases to be aware of its large mass which is aggravated by numb steering. Its automatic transmission didn't help either. 
We'd hoped for a manual, which is new for 09, although it probably wouldn't have made that much of a difference. Despite its well-balanced and responsive rear-drive chassis, the Infiniti G37 Sport didn't feel terribly comfortable at the track. Fingers point to its excessive weight, an engine that didn't feel quite like the claimed 330 horses, and tires that were easily overheated. Pound on the brakes hard and the seat belt cinches up, proof that the G37 is not suited to track workouts. The Volkswagen R32 is a pricier GTI with all-wheel drive, larger fade-free brakes, and a 250 horsepower V6 bolted to VW's outstanding automated manual 6-speed transmission. It's eager to take on its limits. Unfortunately, those limits are lower at VAR due to substantial weight. Although the Z06 is the more serious track car, a base Corvette with a stiffer Z51 suspension package will satisfy all but the most demanding weekend warriors and save up to $23,000 in the process. For 2008, the Z51 has more horsepower and improved shifting and steering. This year, the car was 2.4 seconds quicker, winning the LL2 category and finishing fifth overall. The reason that the Corvette slipped into fifth place overall this year is because there were some very quick cars in the LL3 and LL5 categories. Next up, LL3.